Hi, Mark Rivero with Board Games and Gladi and the UK Gaming Media Network. Uh, our pleasure once again to welcome Martin Wallace. Martin, welcome. Hi there. Um, with another game that's coming down the pike that I personally am very excited because I'm a war gamer. So this has just got me, my heart is a flutter, I must say. So please tell us about A Few Acres of Snow. Okay, uh, A Few Acres of Snow is about the war between Britain and France for control of North America. Um, primarily what is now modern uh, Canada. So as you, and actually the, the, the map goes from Norfolk, Richmond, all the way up to Louisburg and uh, Gaspar. So this is the east coast of America. Uh, so it doesn't deal with one war, it deals generally with the overall conflict from right. the 17th century up until okay. the, the 1750s. Uh, it is, um, it is uh, a card-based game which unashamedly steals its ideas from Dominion. Okay. Registered trademark. So a deck builder. It is a. There is a deck building element going on, which was, which wasn't on my part a case of okay, I must jump on the Dominion bandwagon. Yeah. But when I was thinking about the design, having played Dominion, I thought that that mechanism is a very simple way of replicating the issues you have of fighting so far away from your home base. Yeah. You know, obviously for the British and French, they're thousands of miles away from their, their parent countries. Communication is a real nightmare. Mm -hmm. And what the deck building s simulates very simply is, uh, when you want something, there is going to be a delay between you asking for it and you getting it. Yep. So if the British say, send a message back to the government saying, we need more troops, well, fine. You can pick up a troop card, you add it to your discard pile, but you're never quite sure when it's going to come into your hand, depending on how many other cards you've got in your deck and the shuffle, the way they shuffle. Um, because there are, I mean, obviously there's quite important differences between this and Dominion. Um, so for instance, in Dominion, you get five cards, you use all five. In this, you don't. You have a hand of five cards, but some actions don't use cards. So you may not go through any of your cards. So you go through the, the you go through the deck is a slower process. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, to, to kind of give a better idea of how the game works, you've got the wooden pieces from the limited edition right. so you've got little villages yeah. and then you've got little towns okay. uh, each side the map shows you where you, you, uh, you set up so square is a village a circle is a town so those are the places you control so each side has an initial deck of cards so the British start with these cards which are a stronger yeah. border the French start with these cards so this is your initial deck okay. uh, there are two types of cards. There are location cards, and then there are empire cards. Right. And the key thing with location cards is um, it tells you the location it's for, and then it tells you all of the locations that it's connected to, right, yeah. and then it tells you the uh, the, how you would get between those th that place. So there's three modes of transport. There's bateau, canoe, uh, the ships and there's wagons. Right. Okay, okay. but most yeah. of the time you're going by ship yeah. or bateau. Yeah. Because obviously most of the movement is along rivers. I say I would like to say it's a simple game. Right. <laughs> but it's got a bit of a learning curve on it. Uh, just just the nature of the beast. So you do have a card that gives you all of the different actions. And at first look you're gonna go, Oh my god, yeah, yeah. there's loads and loads of different actions, how am I gonna re remember yeah, all of this? Well a lot of them are just reminding you what the action is on the card. Right. So if you don't have the card, you couldn't do it anyway. Right. And there are certain actions which you're going to use time and time again. Yeah. The main one, the, the main mechanism being the location cards. Yeah. Is one, of, one of the things you're doing in the game is not just about fighting, it's also about settling. So there's all these grey locations that need to be settled. So at first, you're going to be expanding your, your colonies. So, for instance, if the British want to say expand to Albany, so obviously it's a key location. To get there, they would have to play three cards. You have, you would have to play a card to start from. So if the British player had the New York card, then it, the New York card says connected to it's got Albany on it. So it's got a bateau next to it, which means you would have to go to buy a bateau. Now the British only have one card with a bateau card on it. So if that was in your initial hand, right. then you, you, 
you, you could make this move in the first turn. So that you have to chuck away a card with a bateau symbol on it, which would have to be at the bottom. Right. Okay. Third card, because it's got a settler symbol on it, you would have to chuck away another card which had a settler symbol at the right. bottom, because that requires a number of people to go in there to open up farms and uh, whatnot. So if you play those three cards, then you can settle it over. So you place your village marker on that, and then you go through your location deck, and you get the Albany card, and you add that to your discard pile. Okay. So that eventually, that will come back into your hand, obviously, because yeah. after, after you played those, so it's going to discard pile, you then draw back up to five. Okay. So eventually, the Albany card will come back into your hand. So then, if you wanted to go from uh, Albany, say, to Fort William Henry or Fort Stanwix, mm -hmm. you would then play the Albany card and then a yeah. bateau, yeah. which would be a long river. Yeah. Now, if the location doesn't have a settler symbol on it, then it's only two cards, okay. so, because it's basically a trading card. Right. So you just stick a marker in there. Right. It's just the ones that do require settlers, well, to some locations that give you victory points. Yeah. So for instance, yeah. Albany is quite yeah. important because it gives you victory points. Yeah. And that, that is the most complicated mechanism. Okay. Combat works in pretty much the same way. You say where you started from, so you play the location card, and the transport mechanism by which you're going to get to there, right. Uh, and then you have a siege track. Right, okay. Siege can go on for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. Sieges. So Absolutely. you just kind of each side will be chucking forces in oh, yeah. as it's there going, moving the marker okay. one way or the other. Um, so when you get used to the game, it does turn over fairly quickly because when it's your go, you have two actions. Right. So I've just explained the most complex action, which is the settle location. So that, that's how you expand. You can develop a location, so you can turn a village into a town, right. which will double the victory points for the location. Yeah. And for that, you just play the location card and the settler symbol. Uh, you can fortify a location, so you play the location card, you then play a fortification card. Um, so, and you pay a little bit of money, right. and then that allows you to build a nice little... I like that. That's well, again, limited edition only. Very, very evocative. Yeah, it's very nice.